Right, so now that we've determined, um, well, now that we've got our file input information, the next thing to do is create a um, sort of form object, form data, uh, that can be sent via our AJAX request. Yeah, so let's go back to our code and we'll just basically carry on. Um, so instead of printing out the number of files here, what we're going to do is do a loop over the number of files and add our um, well, files to something. So we'll create a for loop here. So for i is 0, while well, i is less than the length, so I shouldn't really delete that line, but never mind. Like so. I'm just going to increment i, or precrement i. And then here we're going to do something. So just to show you, to be absolutely clear how this works, um, let's just log the names of the files as well. So console log. Uh, um, hang on. <laughs> file input files i. So the ith element of input. No, the i element for files array. Ah, and the name property. So if we just log that, what we should get when we click the upload button is all of our um, file names being logged here, which we do. We have the four files I selected. And if we just select loads, we should get a lot more. There we go. So that's how that works. But instead of printing out randomly printing out the uh, name of the file, what we want to do is sort of create something that we can have JavaScript upload. So let's go back to our code. What we're going to do is just above this loop, so here, we're going to create a, um, a new variable called data. This is going to be equal to a new form data object. Form data object is something that's kind of new in JavaScript-ish. Um, it's not supported by Internet Explorer 9. Um, it will be by 10, but people still use 6, so that's not really a problem. Um, yeah, so form data object is something that's quite new. It's not massively widely supported, but um, it will be eventually, hopefully. Um, but it's, it's absolutely the easiest way to upload files with JavaScript. So that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do. So. Instead of logging the um, name, like I said, what we're going to do is append the file to our data object we just created. So we'll do data append two parameters. First parameter is effectively the name, so it's essentially like the um, name uh, name here, and then the value is the second parameter. So we're actually going to use the same name. So the name is going to be um, file with square brackets. Is it file or files? It was file. Okay. Um, like so. And then the value is just going to be the actual file object itself. So file input files i, not one, i. Like so. And that will append our uh, actual file to the object. And then once we've done that, that's pretty much it. All we need to do is worry about uploading the actual, you know, making a request and having it uploaded, which is fairly standard JavaScript stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we'll do is create another new variable called request. And this is going to be equal to a new XML HTTP request. AJAX request, if you prefer. Same thing. And then we need to attach a few event listeners that are going to handle our progress and sort of done messages. So the first one we're going to attach is to the request upload. Um, you can attach these events to either upload or just the request itself. If you do it to the request itself, it counts as the download, so the actual response. If you do it to the upload, it's the stuff being sent to the server, not from it. So for the upload progress, we want the upload, obviously. So we're going to add an event listener there we go and the event we want to listen on is the progress event and this is called every few I don't know, bytes I don't really know how it works, it probably varies per browser but essentially you can get the progress from it, so a percentage and we're going to be adding a function to this which is going to take the event as its parameter as always and we'll leave that at that for now we also need to listen on the load event for the upload, so request 
upload add event listener hope that's right that's obviously not right that might be right load and this is the event that's called when the upload is finished uh, successfully I think yeah successfully um, so that's that that's the progress so as the uploads happening once the uploads complete um, we're also going to add an error listener just in case you want to handle errors in some way so request upload add event listener error function events and so on okay there we go right oops tabs fixed okay so now that we've we know, we could, we've um, got a way to know about our upload um, information, let's go ahead and um, well, I guess create the progress upload things. So yeah, that makes sense. So what we want to do is essentially just display a text um, field in our progress event, and in our um, load event, we want to just hide it again. So all we need to do is get the element, which is this one here, the upload progress ID. And in the load event, we'll go for that first because it's the simplest. So document get element. Nope. <laughs> Better by ID upload. I mean, you could do all sorts of things. Like you could create a progress bar instead of the text. Um, but that's quite awkward to do. So I'm leaving it out for the sake of this upload progress and we'll just set the style display to none which just hides the element from a page which is what we actually defaulted it to originally as you can see here so that's that done next thing is the, um, the actual progress I guess so this is the most complicated thing. There are a few problems. One is that sometimes the browser can't work out the size of the file. So what we need to do is first do a check to see if the length is computable, which you do just like so. And if it is, we'll create a new variable called percent, which is going to be equal to the total amount sent divided by the total amount um, Actually, I shouldn't really call it percent because it's not a percentage, but never mind. Um, no, divided by the total size. So this is essentially event loaded, which is the amount that's been sent already, divided by event total, which is the total size of this request. Pretty simple. Then we're going to create another variable, which is going to be our actual progress element, because we need to do a few things to it. We're not just going to do it in one line like we did here. So progress, and I'll just copy this up for the sake of quick quickness, speed <laughs> yeah okay so first thing we need to do is remove any elements that might still be inside that because this function is called multiple times so if we just add the text the percentage to it it will keep adding a new percentage it won't remove the old one we want, we want it to appear to be updating so the first thing we need to do is remove all of the elements from inside this progress element and the way you do that or well, the easiest way you do that is using a while loop so while progress has child nodes so these are this will return true as long as there are elements within this element and while that is true we want to be removing one of them so progress remove child and then this can be any element that is inside the element um, so for the sake of it, let's just do uh, first child, which is just the first element. So we're going to keep removing the first element until there are none left, and that will just hide any text that um, might appear. So the next thing we need to do is add our text to the element, the progress element, to actually show up on the screen. So the way we do that is by adding something so we'll append 
a new child. Um, it's also quite a good idea just to do this by the way. Say if you defined your element like that with just empty. This text here that I've just highlighted, the three tabs, or in fact the new line between the two lines, so it's all for that, um, does actually count as an element. That's a text node. Um, so you would be getting errors if you just assumed it was empty because it was like that. If it's like just like it is like that, that is actually empty, but it's just something to be aware of. Anyway, so we're going to be adding a new element, and the element that we're going to be adding is going to be a text node. And the way you create a text node is by doing document create text node, and then you put the text that you want to appear in here. Um, and the reason we're using this method instead of just setting the inner HTML property is that, uh, well, into it's a bit awkward to explain, but in two, in what the main reason is because this method is more of the correct way, um, in air quotes, to do it. Uh, but also, say if you were appending something that had something that looked like HTML. So say if you append, you wanted to append some text that had a um, well, less than or greater than symbol in it, that would break the page because it looks a bit like a HTML tag, um, and you don't want that to happen. If you do that, if you use this method, those will just appear as um, what they actually are. So it's a little bit safer um, if you're, especially if you're loading text from a you know, a, a URL that you're not sure of the content. It's a much safer method. Um, but yeah, that's the reason. Hopefully I've covered that. <laughs> anyway, so instead of just appending random text, what we want to do is dynamically calculate our percentage, which we've sort of already done, but we want to essentially multiply this by 100 to get it into a nice percentage format. And then we want to add on so we're going to append a string to this, so we're going to put it in brackets so that it doesn't break the syntax. And we're going to add a percentage symbol, like so. And also we're going to round this number, because by default it's like eight decimal places, which just looks ridiculous. So we'll just call math round on this, and the brackets kind of make sense. So that's our percentage done, and I think... I oh know we can't test this yet because we haven't sent the request. So uh, I'm going to leave this part here because we've come to a nice stopping point. Um, and in the next part, we'll deal with actually sending our request and, um, oh yeah, that's pretty much it. How to get the response, I guess, is the next thing. But we'll deal with uploading first. Okay, thank you for watching, and come back for the next part.